everyone, it's Liz. I hope you're all doing well. Let's talk about everything I sewed in 2023 and some plans for 2024. Twenty twenty three was a wild year for me. The first six months was very hard for reasons I won't go into. But looking back over the year, it maybe explains the lack of projects. But anyway, let's do a quick roundup of what I did make. Firstly, let's talk about trousers. These trousers are the Chandler pants by Untitled Thoughts. I like this pattern a lot. It's a half elasticated waist, which makes them very comfortable to wear. This is a lightweight navy wool from Fabworks in a bird's eye weave, which kind of has the texture of a polo shirt pique. The fabric's very lightweight and really surprisingly comfy to wear for a wool. These wide leg trousers are the Protea pants from Paradise Patterns. I love them, but I feel like maybe they drown me a bit. There is quite a lot of fabric to them. Speaking of which, these are another pair of wool trousers. So these are made from a wool flannel that I got from Fabworks. And I chose this fabric to try and keep me warm in the winter. I work in quite a cold office. Um, I actually haven't even worn them to work yet. <laughs> I don't feel like they um, suit me particularly well, but I might try in the new year. Uh, we'll see. See if I get any compliments on them. Also, I actually didn't finish them until late spring, so sods law it was a bit too warm to wear them by the time I'd finished them. Next up is a set of Yanta overalls from Helen's Closet. I absolutely love this pattern, I've made it twice already. Previously I made it in Ponte de Roma, which is kind of a stretchy but kind of firm jersey. These are made out of a cotton flannel that I got from I think it was BST Fabrics. Major mistake because it's very difficult to work with. Although it's nice and lightweight, it's very slinky and shifty and wants to move everywhere. So it was actually quite difficult to sew and press and keep in shape. I don't think I'd do it again, um, but they are really nice to wear and I'm really pleased with them. Again, I really love this pattern. It's perfect for giving that Lucy and Yak style silhouette that everyone seems to love, that kind of cocoon shaped dungaree is just perfect. I was in need of a couple of basic long sleeve t-shirts and rather than buy a new pattern I decided to try and use the Nico pattern by True Bias. Nico is actually for a turtleneck long sleeve top and I decided to just leave the turtleneck off and instead cut a narrow band and use that in its place and it worked really well. Um, I would probably next time just make a small change and lower the neckline a little bit as it is quite high and I think I'd also increase the width of the upper arm because they are quite tight around my bicep. I made this shirt for a trip to China in October knowing it was going to be quite warm and I bought this linen from I think it was the Good Fabric store. It's a CU at 6 linen which is unfortunately quite itchy. I think it probably would have been fine for maybe something that isn't going to sit around my neck but unfortunately I can't stand the feeling of this on my neck. It's so itchy and it's not good when it's quite warm. And humid. The pattern is the Deer and Doe Camellia which I really love. I'm gonna make it again but not in an itchy linen hopefully. I also learned a valuable lesson about not sewing in a rush and making sure that you trim all the collar seam allowances properly which I did not and because of this the buttonhole is through about six layers of fairly thick linen which is an issue and means that I can't button the top button up very well. So when I make this again, I'll be sure to trim all the collar seam allowances. It does have a rather large seam allowance on this particular pattern. I think it's like five eighths of an inch. I'll make sure to trim all the collar seam allowances down and hopefully that should fix the issue of not being able to button the top button very well. I do want to make another version though because it really is a lovely summer top. This hoodie is made from the rainbow pattern from I Am Patterns, made in a deep stash French terry, which I think I originally got from eBay. It's an incredibly boxy fit, which I'm not in love with. I think boxy kind of can look okay if it's maybe cropped 
or has something else going on with it stylistically but for this I think it just looks too baggy there's too much excess in the back it's something that I might try and fix for next time but it's definitely not my favorite hoodie pattern which is a shame because it comes with lots of different pocket styles two hood types a zip up over the head cuffed and hemmed you name it they've added it as an option so I think you can get like over 60 variations if you play about with different pockets and different uh, styles of hood so it's good value if you want in a good basic hoodie but maybe not great if you prefer something that's a little bit more fitted I do like the welt pockets a lot I think these might be the neatest welt pockets that I've ever done this is the Davis crossbody vest from Elba Textiles I tested this pattern unpaid and I feel a little bit bad that I didn't really get the best images of it at the time. I made it in a black denim and as you can see the contrast isn't great over the black vest that I'm wearing but I really didn't have it in me to uh, make a top to show it off any better so this is kind of what we're, what we're left with. It's a cool pattern, I don't think it's very me. Uh, maybe would look better over a hoodie I'm not sure um, it really is kind of a stylistic piece it's not really very functional there is a pocket in the front you can't fit very much in it maybe a couple of credit cards and some notes and your keys but yeah cute pattern this year I coached my friend Jill through making her first bra and because of that I got bitten by the bra making bug again so I made quite a few bras and bralettes I made two Black Beauty bras, Black Beauties, a pattern by Emerald Erin and this is a tried and tested pattern for me and fits me well in a 32D. I made this skull lace version with a turquoise foam and I made this orange starry tulle version with a black foam. The starry lace is a non-stretch lace which actually resulted in the upper cup being a little too tight because it didn't stretch over the foam. This is a problem that I haven't encountered before because I usually work with stretch lace. So next time I make it, if I'm using a non-stretch lace, I'll be sure to size up the lace layer just a smidge. I also tried two new patterns. I used the Made Veil by Contour Atelier, which I absolutely love. It's a good fit for me, but I needed to adjust it to add more volume in the center front of the cup. I made two pretty plain twirls out of a sheer soft tulle. I've never made a sheer soft tulle bra before. Um, generally foam I find is a little bit more forgiving if your sewing's not really perfect but these have quickly become my favourite bras and I'm definitely going to make lots more. They're so lightweight and breathable and they're just perfect for summer. These ones are made in a 32D. What I do love about making the Made of Ale bra is that Contour Atelier, who the pattern is from, also sells all the exact underwires that go with that pattern as well. So it's not hard to find an underwire that matches and the underwires seem to be a really good fit for me. I also made a twirl of the AFI Atelier Exquisite bra. The sizing was unfortunately a little bit off for me. The underbust measurement and the BCD put me in a 36A, which is a little bit small, if I'm honest. I'm not sure that the BCD method, which is where you measure from um, the apex of the bust down to the wire line, really takes into account the fact that I have fullness in strange places, so under my um, armpits and at the centre front. So the cup actually ended up being a size too small for me. Next time I'll size up and try the 36B, which is a sister size of the 32D. So in theory, it should fit me quite well. That's also the size that takes my preferred wire size as well. So I'm hopeful that that should work out well next time. I like the pattern a lot though. The style lines are lovely and there's a lot of sew alongs and tutorials out there there is one for turning it into a darted bra as well, which I'm quite keen to try. I made two soft bralettes using the Barrett bralette pattern by Madeline. If you've watched any of my other bra making videos, you'll know that this is one of the ones that I recommend for beginners. It's a free pattern. 
I really like it, it's very comfortable, I've made it before and I tend to use a small band and a large cup, unfortunately it's not in sized cups, that is the one big downfall of this um, pattern I think. That being said, they are one of the most comfortable bralettes that I've ever made and worn, so it's an absolute staple pattern for me. The last one that I want to talk about is this absolutely fabulous coat. This is the Tasuti Patterns London Coat and I made this in a boiled wool which I got in return for a blog post as part of the Minerva Ambassador Programme. I wasn't sure about this coat at first. When I tried it on it didn't feel like it was very me but after I took some photos of it a couple of weeks ago I actually realised that I do love it a lot and plan to get a lot of wear out of it. I think it would just be the perfect thing to dress up or dress down, kind of has this cool apocalyptic dystopian vibe about it, so I hope to get quite a lot more wear out of it. I hope you're enjoying this video, leaving me a thumbs up or a comment really helps this channel to grow. If you're not subscribed, take a second to subscribe, it would absolutely mean the world to me and would help so much. For 2024 I do of course have lots of plans, who doesn't? First up I want to make a bust form to show off my bras on Instagram. I'm kind of over the whole trying to model them myself these days. It's a nightmare trying to take flat photos, they never ever seem to do the bra justice and even having them hang on a coat hanger just for me it doesn't look great. I'm going to follow a tutorial I found on YouTube by AFI Italia which again is the pattern maker of the exquisite bra and they've put together this amazing tutorial for a small bust form using bra foam of all things. So I bought a meter of ivory coloured bra foam and I'm going to give that a go. It might turn out to be a massive disaster I have made a dress form before, a custom dress form from Bootstrap Fashions and it was probably one of the most difficult things to sew and turned out kind of disappointingly lumpy and bumpy. So I'm hoping to make this one a bit more lightweight, use a bit less stuffing maybe and I'm hoping that the bra form will help smooth out those lumps and bumps and it'll also be pinnable. We'll see, we'll see how it goes, I'll keep you updated. I'll also be setting myself a target to not buy any more fabric. I have such a huge stash now, it's actually a little bit embarrassing and is also starting to stress me out a little bit. So I'll be doing some Shop My Stash videos where we go stash diving together, I'll choose a fabric and then talk about the fabric a little bit and choose a pattern that I think will work quite well with it. I will allow myself to buy lining fabrics, plain coordinates if they're needed and interlining or fusible interfacing. I'll only allow myself to buy them if they're really needed though. I also want to make a lot more bras. Despite having made a few this year, a girl can never have too many, right? I'd like to perfect the fit of the AFI exquisite bra and also I'm quite tempted by the lily pad designs at Lucimine bra which I've seen around a lot this year. I really like the shape of the cup of that one so I'm quite keen to try that and experiment with it. I have bought some very pretty bra making kits and laces this year so I'm quite keen to get using those and I'll show you those now. So I did buy some nice kits, laces and tools this year. This is a kit that I bought from Small Bobbins. You can see this is an amazing stable lace that kind of has this greeny iridescent embroidering on it. And in this kit I got everything that I would need to make a bra and some matching underwear. I would say I could probably easily squeeze three bras out of this kit. There's absolutely tons of stuff. Um, there's matching elastics as well and also some little rings and sliders in there. Again that's from Small Bobbins. I also bought this rather fantastic looking lace from 
Briar F Sewing Wares. Um, it's kind of like if if goth did autumn. <laughs> anyway, it'll be an interesting um, challenge to try and use this lace, I think, because it'll be hard to use it as the top of a cup because I think that there are bits that'll just flop over. But I'm looking forward to seeing what I can do with that. I also bought a kit from Madeline. Let's just put that to one side for now, which came with this rather amazing embroidered tool which is kind of embroidered with stars and moons and in the kit I also got this amazing serpent bordered tool so you can see it's got these kind of snakes on it quite excited about that one I also got this lace from Sewing Chest, which is one of my favourite places to buy bra making elastics from, um, but this I really like. Um, this was also part of the kit that came with the Madeline stuff and I don't know whether I really think that this goes all that well. Um, so it might become something I'm not sure, uh, not sure if it's me, might just de-stash it or it might become something for my youngest daughter who absolutely would love that, could be a sparkly skirt maybe. I also got this stripey tool from Beware which I think will make a cool sheer bra, it's actually it's quite stretchy in one direction so I'll have to line it with something non-stretch looking forward to making something with that as well so yes lots of options for bra making this year um, various different colors and lots of sparkly stuff will be a good bra making year I think I will be hosting some sewing weekends in 2024 with my friend Jill who you might know better as the one-armed sewist on Instagram. Our venture Northern Sewing Escape was launched in October and the first one was held in December and it was a huge success. So we'll be doing two more dates, one in February and one in April. There are still some tickets left for our April date, so if you find yourself with a little bit of Christmas money left over, I'll pop the link to our Eventbrite in the description and check it out. I'm not going to do any kind of make nine. I always find that my needs change as I go through the year and as such I never ever manage to stick to it, so what's the point? That said, I do know that I have some wardrobe gaps. I really need some more jeans. I currently live in the same two pairs of skinny jeans that I got from Next. So it's on my list to make some jeans and also make some shorts for the summer. I could also do with some new blouses for work. I'll keep you updated about what patterns I'm going to use in my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you all have a wonderful start to 2024 and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!